Try, Adapt, Learn. In this video, we will brush a quick paint job on this old tractor, which is a 1941 Ford 9N. If you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe now for more videos including DIY, maintenance, projects, and yard work. As seen, I started with the hardware underneath the seat. I then moved on to some of the areas surrounding that hardware. This is definitely not a how-to video, but more of a how I did it. A proper paint job would start with preparation of the surface. This would include stripping the surface down to the bare metal or at least to the point past corrosion. The surface would then need to thoroughly be cleaned of dirt, dust, and chemicals. From there, usually some kind of primer would be the first layer, followed by a base coat, and then a clear coat for finishes such as automotive. The next area was the bottom of the seat itself. This was given next to no prep time except for a very quick sanding to have something for the paint to adhere to. So although this is not a proper paint job, it does accomplish a few things. First, and the main priority of this process was to help delay the rust while working on other parts of this project. Now there is no doubt that there is quite a bit of rust on the surfaces throughout the tractor. Although it wasn't going to fall apart overnight, starting to knock off the surface rust could delay some of the spread. The paint job would also reduce the contact with the rust, dirt, and oil that was initially on the tractor. Since there was quite a bit of oil stained on the surface of the paint, a new paint job would also be a good point of reference to identify any active leaks versus oil that may have gathered in the past but not cleaned off. I then turned the seat over to the top of the seat. This is one of the first parts I wanted to paint first since it needed to dry first in order for me to sit on the tractor. The second idea is to test out a different color scheme. There was no specific goal for the color scheme at this time other than I preferred dark green over red and black. To test a different color scheme, we are painting this tractor with hunter green, a rust-oleum color. This green is noticeably darker than the familiar green used on John Deere tractors. This was old paint from a can already open, so it was even thicker than usual. I moved on to the hood next since it is such a big area. Although I wouldn't be sitting on the hood, I know that when working around the vehicle, I would come in contact with it a lot. For this reason, I also wanted it to be one of the first pieces to paint and dry. As a side note, Ford tractors in this year were said to have been painted fully gray. In later years, they would have been painted red with gray panels such as the hood and fenders. The later Ford tractors were also known for their blue colors. Another side note about color is that many of the tractor brands have had various color schemes throughout the years. That being said, currently John Deere is known for their green and yellow wheels. Any other yellow on John Deere is likely for their construction or industrial machinery. Case tractors have had different colors over the year and now Case IH is known for their red color. This Case IH red is similar to the red on the International Harvester, Farmall, and Massey Ferguson tractors. All of our tractors had primarily green color with a little bit of white. Kubota tractors are known for their orange colors. Bobcats are known for their white color as well as additional orange color. And although Caterpillar is a construction equipment company, their primary color is yellow with an additional color of black. From this front view, there are also indications of the gray color that was originally painted from the factory. Once we were done with the bottom, we then moved on to the skid plate and the bumper that was fabricated for this tractor. The bumper itself shows little corrosion due to it being galvanized steel pipe. The hole in the pipe facing toward the front is likely part of the original purpose for the pipe. From the side view you can see an additional piece welded to hold on the original hood and side pieces together. The support to hold the rear of the fuel tank to the hood can be seen rotted away and hanging. The condition of pieces like this make brush painting a more efficient option and less replacing the whole piece. Next was the area around the gauges. I didn't mind painting the gauges as I knew I would likely replace them in the near future. I did not prepare this area properly. Had I sanded the old paint, there would be a grit for the new paint to adhere to. 
Regardless of that, I still continued down the area below the gauges. I also worked around the shifter and the top of the transmission case. I could already see that I liked the green over the faded red. Not knowing if I would replace the front wheels in the near future, I wanted to see the color on the wheel as well. Now that I was committed to the color, I had to paint the other front wheel. Since I started the front wheel, I figure I should paint the rear wheel as well. The rear wheel on the right side was interesting because it had oil stains. These stains are likely from a rear axle oil seal leak. It was hard to tell if this was an ongoing leak or oil that was never cleaned up, so I just painted right over it. I would not recommend this to anyone. You really need to paint over dry and clean surfaces. The only thing worse than painting over old oil would be painting oil-based paint over water. Once the front of the wheels were finished, it was time to move on to the back of the wheels. These areas were much more corroded. I then moved on to some of the steering hardware. This rear wheel is pretty much rotted. Since I did take the time to chip away some of the rust, I figure I would just move on and keep matching the color. I also didn't really care about the paint getting on the tires since they are rotten and they will need to be replaced. While one rear wheel was dry to paint, the other had oil that I could see. Again, surfaces such as these were not prepared properly, but I decided to paint over them anyway. It would likely be sooner or later that I would have to disassemble these pieces or replace them with new ones. I started painting the hardware around the rear axle and the three-point hitch. I then moved on to the other side around the axle and the three-point hitch. The transmission case was extremely oil, but I just wanted to match the color. The radius arm and steering drag link were in okay condition, so painting wasn't that difficult. It had the same issues as all the other oil covered surfaces, so I just kept moving on. The same was true for the surface of the oil pan, so I just painted the sides. I started to paint the top of the head on the engine. This process was more to hold some of the dirt because I knew I would be replacing spark plugs soon. I then painted the front center axle as well as some of the parts in front of the engine governor. Next I wanted to paint the oil filter housing, the breather, and then go on to painting the side of the engine block and the starter. Along with the starter I also painted the battery tray and parts near that area. At this point I was just painting parts that I had previously painted on the other side. Now I was back to some of the controls near the rear axle. I used dark barbecue black for the muffler. The can was already open and it was just to test the color. This would likely peel off as soon as the engine was up to temperature. I also painted the PVC piping that's used as the air intake tube. This will likely be replaced, but again I wanted to match the colors. Mufflers and other parts of the exhaust system should be painted with paint specific to engine exhaust manifold or header paint. Now that the painting was underway, I also wanted to paint some of the hardware that would hold the fuel tank support against the hood. Since the corrosion on the alternator would likely return, I just decided to paint over it. I also decided to paint some of the parts near and around the alternator. This definitely does give me a good idea of the color I want to go forward with. The painting also gave me a chance to spend time looking at the parts. This allowed me to start making choices of some of the tasks I want to accomplish first with this project. Although it may take as little as one day to dry, I let this dry for a couple days after the photos were taken. I found that when you brush paint as thick as this, it typically takes a week for it to fully dry. I am satisfied with the results as it will help delay the rust while I try to get this tractor working in the yard. I figured I'd also paint the front end of the alternator. That being said, anybody who knows anything about paint knows that this will start to rust within months to a year. Without the proper preparation, rust will continue to grow underneath this paint. The only way to truly stop and protect it is to get down past the rust on the surface of the bare metal. That being said, once again, this has made a difference in my eyes, giving me a glimpse of what the project will look like moving forward. I also think the new color gives consistency to the whole tractor and is going to keep me motivated to continue working on it. So this is how it turned out. 
Overall, given where I'm at with this project, I'm satisfied with the pain. The reality is I may be going through these parts and changing them anyway. Even with a process as unconventional as a green Ford tractor, I hope you enjoyed watching it as I do looking at it compared to what it was. As I make new videos, I want to share them with you, so subscribe now. Also comment, like, and check out some of the other content on our channel.